I mean, NASDAQ's down, what, like 40% or something like that since, since the peak. Um, and, and so some of this is, is herd behavior. Some of it is herd behavior triggered by monetary policy, right? Like to the extent that you, you know, the world believed that there was going to be easy money forever and, you know, all numbers would keep going up except for the value of the dollar. Um, you know, people kept investing and then there's a strong signal change and all of a sudden people felt like numbers could go down because maybe money was going to flow out of this system um, instead of into it and and sort of, you know, every, everything came down in price. And, and so some of this is not a crypto specific phenomenon. Some of this is like what investing looked like at sort of peak mania. Um, but, you know, I think putting that aside, you know, I, I think that Bitcoin's price roughly reflects that dynamic of like, inflows and outflows into the monetary ecosystem. Um, certainly the asset you know, price decline was a, a strong sign that in crypto and frankly in a lot of fintech, like there, like things were way too light on use cases and that there was a lot of hand waving going on both on use cases and on sort of financial modeling that was uh, suspect. Um, but I think beyond those two, you can, look, you can look at things that didn't just fall 60% in this crash, but fell 99% in the fall. And that's when I start, think you start to look at things that were sort of worse than just like, yeah, there is a change in monetary policy, a change in investor sentiment. Like those are the types of things where there was probably artificial mechanisms sort of that were, you know, creating these flywheel wheels, driving it up with nothing fundamental backing it. And then the flywheel starts to, to falter and the whole thing crashes back down. And obviously Luna is like, you know, the, the prototypical example of that Celsius probably you'd put in it in a similar bucket, and um, and I, I think you know that that sort of is a layer of which I think is a lot of the long tail space of crypto and some selection of respected second tier um, places that that were probably worse than than just like you know monetary policy change. I think that people say a lot about bubbles is that there's a sort of misallocation of capital and like yep. like. Does that make sense in this space, like to talk about that and like, yeah. is capital being like sort of better allocated now after the winter? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. And, and I think it does make sense to talk about that. And I think that like, you know, where have the sort of re-ratings been, so to speak, where is the, the, or the relative re-ratings been? I think one thing, when you look at the companies in crypto and frankly across the space, I think profitability was sort of a dirty word for a number of years and it is returned to investor parlance, right? Like last year, if you saw a typical funding round from VCs, like was that valuation related to the profit of the company? Probably not. Like revenue was sort of like, like there's sort of, without saying so explicitly, everyone, you know, EBITDA or profit or something to, to just purely revenue as like the driver of value and like no thought towards like how profit would eventually catch up to that. And I think that there's been a substantial re-rating towards looking for at least likely or at least plausible pathways towards profitability being a core component of an investment thesis in a company which feels a little strange to say but but i think was something that was kind of missing um and then when you look at tokens um uh, i i think that like there's this sort of question of like if it ever woke up one day and this thing was missing was gone would anyone miss it right like like would anyone be like oh shit like someone has to go start the new this thing now that 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 old copy was gone. And I think that that's been like a fairly strong predictor of which things have survived versus which things have not. And I think that like, um, you know, obviously like stable coins have survived, exchanges have survived, um, uh, blockchains that have some property that is sort of like plausibly superior to other blockchains have survived, um, including just being like a, a more consensus um, you know, a, a mechanism with like more built-in consensus from lots of players and things where like, if they went away, you would forget they ever existed, have generally sort of gone away and people have started to forget that, that they existed. Can I ask what your, what your sort of interest or knowledge of this is? Like, like in your day job, I think of you as like running an arbitrage fund and running an exchange that kind of like clips fees from people trading stuff. Like how important to you, to you in your job is it that things be robust or useful and how much of it is like if the number is moving around then I'm, i can make a profit on it locally speaking it's mostly driven by the latter like if, if you want to say like what's going to determine how much you know revenue we make next month like realistically speaking like 
whatever, that's going to be a function of volatility and, 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 and volume and monetary flows and, and, and things like that. Um, and, and that's the same thing if you look at, you know, NASDAQ, right? Like, what, what, what's going to determine NASDAQ's Q3 earnings this year? People aren't sort of looking at, like, fundamental, like, you know, long-term business models of things. People are saying, like, well, I don't know, what's market fault going to be like? Um, I think when you look in a longer-term view, though, I think it is quite important. Um, I know, when, when I say Jane Street trading, this is something that, like, some of the more senior people there would say sometimes, and kind of not along, but not really, not that I disagree, but it, it didn't really sink into me, which is, you know, they say, yeah, look, sometimes volatile days can be good for profit, but in the long run view, like, we like it when markets are healthy and efficient and going up and stable because that is in the long run what just creates more activity, right? And, and like, even if you ignore any altruistic things here, right, it's just like, that, that's what long run, and, and, and I think there's a similar thing here where like, how healthy the ecosystem is in the long run is gonna be a very strong predictor of, you know, how much we can grow. So on that note, I want to talk about, you know, one big symptom of the crypto winter is like there's been a blow up of a number of platforms that I would sort of loosely call crypto shadow banks, um, where they're sort yep. of taking in short term demand money from customers and lending it in weird opaque ways. And you have touched in some form probably all of those. Uh, you've been a, a lender, a borrower, a rescuer. How much of the rescuing activity is about that very long run view of like it is healthier for the crypto ecosystem that you are levered to for depositors not to be constantly blown up. That's a real part of it. Like, and, and maybe to make this like more concrete, like the explicit sort of like working principle we had in a number of these was like, it's okay to do a deal that is moderately bad right. in, in bailing out a place. Like the bar was not, this is a good return on investment. The bar is like, this is not that bad of a return on investment, or like we are incinerating a relatively small-ish amount of money in doing this. And just to tease that out, you're incinerating a small amount of money because like in the long run, you get a large amount of money from the crypto ecosystem being... Healthy. I was gonna say healthy, but I almost said popular. Like... <laughs> well, I think it's, I, I think if you want to look at it from just a strictly business case, right? And, and obviously if you, know, whatever fiscal duty to, to you know shareholders to do things that make sense for FTX, you, know, you could say, look, it's it, it's it being healthy that would cause it to be popular, right? Like yeah. ultimately it's the popularity that would matter, but like that there's a flow through from health there, which is sort of the operative thing. I think there's also just a thing of like, you know, we need to be a good constructive actor in this space if we're not, it's just like bad on many levels and, and be a diffuse good that like, whatever, we don't need to know beforehand exactly how that pays off.